Monkey Monkey. Welcome to my House of Love! Now, when they announced they were going to make a movie out of Lego, I was sceptical. You see, the thing about Lego, in my youth this is, long before the licensed sets with their rigid builds and limited imaginations, the Lego of my youth, it was infinite. Anything your imagination could conceive, Lego could build. Why, British adventurer and personality James May showed us as much. He built an entire house, a human-sized house that is, out of Lego. As an experiment, of course. Anyway, when this Lego movie finally came, it managed to include this sense of imagination, unlimited imagination, alongside a story that, well, seeing as it's today's subject, let's introduce it properly. Everything is awesome. Everything is cool when you're part of a team. Released in 2014, the Lego Movie is the tale of one Emmett Brikowski, a seemingly ordinary workaday builder, and the adventure that begins when he notices a strange event. Directed by Phil Lord and Christopher Miller, the dream team that brought us the first Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs, but not its sequel, of which I wasn't so fond, the Lego Movie has the distinction of being certified fresh by movie review aggregate website Rotten Tomatoes. And as a side note, the Lego Movie is the first U-rated, G-rated in America, movie that I've reviewed in a while. So hold on to your bricks and mind your feet, as we discover whether everything really is awesome with... The Lego Movie! Meet Emmett Brikowski. Just about the most ordinary guy there is. He works in construction. But he's so unspectacular that nobody notices him outside of work. But fate has a plan for Emmett Brikowski. I think I heard a whoosh. And it all begins with a mysterious female. Not to be confused with regular women. A lot more smoke. Or sometimes mist. And lipstick. A lot of lipstick. Usually bright red, occasionally deep plum. Reminds me of this one time in Singapore. An implausible hole in the ground. And a conspicuous red rectangle. This is the piece of resistance, our designated MacGuffin for the movie. We'll learn some more about it as we go. But the next thing Emmett knows, he's in custody. Now then, this interrogator is Bad Cop, a twin personality with Good Cop. Their relationship is rather strained. And worse, he's about to be unalived. Enter the mysterious woman, Wild Style. She rescues our poor unfortunate protagonist and flees across the city. Let's fly. But she's in for a shock. Favorite song? Everything is awesome! Oh. Yes, the special is nothing of the sort. <laughs> so much for prophecy. But then, if I had a penny, you know what I mean? And so our heroes escape to the Wild West Realm. You see, Emmett's home realm, Bricksburg, is just one of many realms in the Lego Movie universe. There's also the Old West, the Octan Tower, Pirate's Cove, Cloud Cuckoo Land, Middle Zealand, and a few others that are mentioned in passing. They used to be able to travel freely between one another, and mix and match to their heart's content. But Lord Business, for some reason, didn't like this, and preferred order and... perfection. So he separated them all off into their own thing. Order and perfection. We've been here before. But the villain of the piece, Lord Business, has... THE CRAGGLE! Essentially, the craggle is just super glue. To be exact, it's an American brand of superglue. Crazy glue. Craggle 
comes from some of the letters having worn away on the tube's outer coating. And the piece of resistance is just this tube of Crazy Glue's lid. Lord Business tests out this super weapon on bad cops' parents, no less. But good cops having none of it. And pays a heavy price for disobedience. Back in the Old West, we meet Vitruvius, the designated mentor. And in a back room, we enter the desert of Emmett's mind, where we discover his one creation, the Double Decker Couch. A Double Decker Couch. There are several design flaws to this idea, but it is Emmett's own genuine idea, so whatever. But training will have to wait, as Bad Cop has caught up with them. Our heroes look to escape the town into the mountains of this realm, where Emmett gets his first lesson in free building. <laughs> Would it be terribly cliche of me to comment upon Emmett using his head? But Bad Cop won't be denied. Luckily, our heroes are rescued by the unlikeliest saviour. Yes, that man, Batman, who is also a master builder, and apparently Wildstyle's boyfriend. And it's apparently super serious. Don't ask me, I'm just reviewing it. And so we arrive at Cloud Cuckoo Land. Ah, Cloud Cuckoo Land. Last refuge of creativity. It's... kinda crazy. Where Emmett is asked to speak. Which goes about as well as you'd expect. And you are right! But things can always get worse, because bad cops simply won't be denied. The Master Builders whip up a submarine to escape. But it doesn't last very long. But shock! Emmett's double-decker couch is built to last. You see, these master builders have worked alone for too long and have forgotten how to work together as a team. Whereas with Emmett, he's always been a cog in a well-oiled machine with a singular vision. So when he builds something, it's built to last. Enter Pirate Cyborg Metalbeard, who rescues our heroes. And Emmett's second attempt at a speech along with his plan to stop the nefarious Lord business, is much more successful. And so our heroes enter the Octan Tower, with a view to disarming the Kraggle. Which almost works, but Bad Cop truly will not be denied. Nor will Vitruvius, who kicks Robot. Before his untimely death, of course. You know, for kids! And all seems lost, as the piece of resistance, the only thing that can stop the Craggle and end this madness, is lost to infinity. But the ghost of Vitruvius has one last inspirational speech to deliver, which inspires Emmett to throw himself into the unknown. Somebody count for a family film, eh? <laughs> or at least it would be if Emmett was actually dead. Which he's not. Ah, but we'll get back to that. Of course, there's still an apocalypse to stop, and Wildstyle sends out a message to all the realms to get building. But shock! This whole story was nothing more than a child's fantasy. Pretty obvious, really, if you think about it. I mean, the signs are there if you look for them. Kids like Batman, they prefer lasers over real bullets. And look at Lord Business. He could easily be seen as a child's version of their own stern father. If they had a stern father. And our youthful alter is rebuked by his control freak father. But Emmett, even in his frozen, supposedly powerless state, cannot sit idly by as all is destroyed. And so, with all his will and all his might, and a little outside human help. Emmett returns to his world. And so, Emmett faces down Lord Business, as in our world, 
father and son realise a greater truth, all of which causes Lord Business to put away his craggle and end this madness himself. And all would be well, if not for a sudden invasion of Duplonians. But that's another story. Anyway, that was the Lego Movie, and I just have to put this one into the House of Love. This is more than just a family movie, though it doesn't slouch on that front first off. The plot, chiefly, is the most subversive thing about this movie, being that it is, for all intents and purposes, the heroic monomyth. The legend of the ordinary person that becomes the great warrior that saves the day. And being that Emmett is so unspectacular to begin with, it's a powerful message that truly anyone can become a hero. Not to mention that the whole backstory plays into what I mentioned in the introduction, the dichotomy of the licensed build versus the free building philosophy of earlier sets. The Lego movie challenges the idea that things need to be built according to the instructions. That's only one way to do it. The Lego movie encourages you to go beyond the instructions, to think outside the box. The characters, while played mostly for comedy, are engaging and entertaining. Chris Pratt's Everyman Emmett, keeping upbeat, if not abreast of the situation. Elizabeth Banks's Wild Style, who veers from cool to angry to determined. And the genius casting of Morgan Freeman in the mental role of Vitruvius. Well, it just works. And the pacing, while breathless for a hundred minute movie, doesn't feel rushed or overpowering. It manages to fit all the beats of the monomyth into its runtime, and still have time for character, the message of creativity, and a brief cameo of LEGO Star Wars characters. If I absolutely had to pick a failing though, I personally, in myself, felt that the turnabout came too easily. Sure it was meant to mirror the understanding that father and son had reached in the real world, but it was just a smidgen emotional. Then again, I suppose that's all you can get away with in a G or U rated movie. Overall then, The Lego Movie is a fantastic family film, an amazing allegory, and an awesome advert for a toy that's a tool which enables exploration of infinite imagination. Yes, everything is awesome. I've been Funky Monkey wishing you good days, great entertainment, and unlimited imagination. So long, folks.